Oh dear, this is a big one. We've got a big box, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Not sure why I'm choking on it. But here we have an incredibly exciting do-it-all gaming monitor that, I'm gonna repeat myself, can literally do it all. I don't think I've seen a spec sheet quite like this. Maybe on like the stupidly, stupidly expensive flagship products that no one's ever gonna buy. But this is aimed at everybody. Well, everybody that can afford a 32 inch 4K 144Hz HDMI 2.1 monitor. The Gigabyte Aorus 17 is a gaming powerhouse, coming equipped with Intel's latest 12th gen i7 processors, up to an RTX 3080 Ti graphics card, crazy fast Intel Wi-Fi 6E, and a stupendous 360Hz IPS display. Learn a little bit more and get yours today, hit the link in the description below. We've actually been waiting ages for these sort of monitors to actually arrive because HDMI 2.1 one is what allows you to actually use this with like a games console and to get high refresh rate 4K from something that isn't like a 2000 pound gaming TV. This also has HDR, it's got local dimming and it supports DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression, which is literally why I say this monitor can do pretty much everything, because it can. Very large and sturdy stand a remote, probably quite useful if you're going to use this with a console. The much more substantial piece of the stand, this should just pop on top of this, screw into place underneath, click it into place tallestly, and then do the grand reveal du -du -du -du, of the BenQ Mobius 32 inch behemoth do it all monitor. The first thing I notice is this little speaker grill down the bottom because this is meant to be more like a mini TV and a monitor rather than just a PC monitor. So you've actually got a microphone built into this as well. In terms of inputs, you've got two HDMIs, both of which I believe are 2.1, and then you've got that DisplayPort 1.4, USB hub, and a headphone jack. You've got all of the usual adjustments, up, down, tilt, left, right. We will get our perfectly matching gaming PC that's rocking an RTX 3070 Ti. Power button is on the front. No, actually that's not the power button, that is an HDR button. Not really sure why that's there, but okay. I mean, right off the bat, you can tell the image quality on this is up there with some of the best. For a PC gaming monitor, 32 inches, this thing is beautiful. I love the form factor, I love that everything is so sharp from the resolution, but it really is the colour accuracy and the richness that you get from this IPS panel that really does make it stand apart from not only cheaper versions of like the same sort of thing, but also just high-end monitors from a few years ago. We've come on such a long way. On the face of it, when you look at the blur levels of this, it's absolutely fine. But I wouldn't say it's like really good. Comparing this to the top end gaming monitors, to the very best 1440p, 165 hertz monitors, and then of course you can go stupidly high end with 240 or 360 hertz displays, obviously they will beat this. But ultimately it all comes down to what you're expecting from your gaming monitor. If you're using a controller and playing console games, then I don't think you'd notice any difference at all. And then for general PC gaming goodness, this is more than sufficient, it's just not the very best. The thing for me though that actually impresses me the most with this is the level of input lag. I didn't expect it to be this low. You really do feel very connected to the game and when you're using a mouse and keyboard and a title like this, it really does make all of the difference. Ooh, got him. The other good thing about Cyberpunk is that this is a title that also supports HDR. And this is a monitor that also supports HDR. I'll tell you what, this is actually one of the most striking HDR performances I think I've seen from a monitor that isn't its like sole purpose and sole feature. Yes, if you grab something that's got like a mini LED backlight or one of these like super expensive G-Sync Ultimate monitors that has like this crazy backlight array and requires active cooling and all of that stuff, then yes, that will still beat this. The main things really that you're looking for with HDR is not only great contrast, but you want an image that isn't flat. You want more dynamic range to your image. So brights need to be brighter, shadows need to be darker. And when you combine that with the extra color information that you get from the HDR10 signal, you get something that just looks better. Fancy that, a 1,000 pound monitor can actually look pretty good. Go figure. As someone that takes their PC gaming career very seriously, I sat down with this for an extended session of not only Apex Legends, but also some Fortnite, and I think my conclusions are that this is a brilliant all-round gaming monitor, despite the fact that it's not the fastest thing out there. Because this uses an IPS panel rather than a VA, while it isn't the fastest, the motion blur that you do get actually looks okay, to be honest with you. It's not like you've got any horrible black smeariness or anything that's distracting, you just don't have the most amount of clarity that you can possibly get 
get on a gaming screen, it's not something I think that you'll notice unless you're actively looking for it. The main thing for me is the input lag and just the level of responsiveness is more than I need from my PC gaming monitor. I was able to get Fortnite win, which felt pretty good. It's not the perfect gaming monitor, but that combination of the 4K resolution, the 32 inch screen size and the color accuracy is very hard to beat. There is of course one big elephant in the room left to address though, the performance with a games console. We will use the cable that comes included in the box. Oh, I was watching A Star Is Born the other day and I don't think I put the disc away. The most important thing is to go into our settings and actually have a look at our 4K TV details and it supports everything other than Dolby Vision. For our console testing, let's boot into some Forza Horizon 4. This does only run at 60 FPS, sadly. Again, it's very much more of the same here. When it comes to image quality, this thing looks absolutely fantastic. It definitely doesn't look quite as good as the very best TVs, especially like an OLED set, but I think for a gaming monitor, this is definitely up there with some of the best I've used. The speakers actually are surprisingly good, by the way. It threw me off at first because it doesn't sound very good when you have this turned up to like 40 in the menus, but as soon as you turn it down on the monitor and then up on your PC or on your Xbox, then actually it's up there with one of the best monitors I've used. But you could always just wear headphones or get a sound bar and put it down here. For the night owls out there, or anyone that's gonna use this monitor in a pitch black room, it's definitely not the absolute best you can get. The way the HDR backlighting system works means that this looks a little bit weird. You almost have these light spears that come up from the bottom of the monitor. So if you're wanting to use this in a pitch black room and watch movies with black bars, it's probably not the absolute best choice out there. We do, of course, also have the microphone that's built into this. Is this good enough for gaming? I mean, there's no noise in the background at the moment. So yeah, this is a pretty darn tasty little monitor, but where does all of this actually leave us? Is this a monitor that I would recommend that you buy? It's not necessarily a yes, because this is a very particular display. This costs over a thousand pounds, which you could say is fair when you look at the spec sheet, you see what it can offer and the fact that there aren't actually many monitors like this on the market. But the thing for me is that you can buy an OLED TV for very similar money to this, Something that's a whole lot bigger is gonna have much better image quality, arguably better HDR as well, because you don't have to rely on like a dimming system, it's all sort of handled with the self-emitting diodes. It doesn't represent the greatest value for money. I mean, even if you are going to be using a next-gen console, as we've just discussed, this is only 60 hertz. So getting that full fat 4K 120 hertz Gaming isn't necessarily gonna happen even if you have this display. So in my opinion, this is very much a PC monitor that is also great for console gaming rather than a dedicated console gaming monitor slash TV. And in this use case, it definitely does come highly recommended with the exception of the fact that you can get cheaper monitors like the PG32UQ for a fair bit less money. And I haven't tested that one yet, so I can't say which is necessarily going to be better. Either way, it is just really important that you understand the pros and the cons of a monitor like this. Image quality, exceptional. Love the resolution, love the fast refresh rate, and the color accuracy is brilliant. But you are going to need a very powerful PC to actually be able to drive this thing. If this is okay with you, you're aware of the limitations with such a future-proof, super high-end display, and you're willing to pay for it, then I think you would be very happy with this. It's just in terms of value for money, I'm not sure it's quite there. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Do you think a 32 inch monitor makes a lot of sense or would you rather have a TV or something that's far cheaper? And as always, if you do wanna check out current pricing on this, you can find my Amazon affiliate links listed down below and links for the incredible Gigabyte Aorus 17. This machine packs in 14 cores of CPU power for sky high frame rates with options to suit every gamer's needs and budget. You've got DDR5 or DDR4 memory, Thunderbolt 4 and the WinForce Infinity cooling system. Learn a little bit more and get your today with the link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one.